Hey folks. Oop, careful. How you doing guys? Uh well I uh I'm gonna do a bit of a follow-up to a video I did hmm, three weeks ago. Yeah, it was three weeks ago. Um when we talked about 762 by 39 ammo. Well um I wanted to break that down a little bit further. Um, because I just gave you the history, but I want to go over some of the various types, loadings, and potential uses. I don't know. We'll talk. We'll, we'll see what happens. Um, you guys know I'm using this Yugo Milserve Mil ammo. Um, but we'll talk about that here. Let's get one of these guys out. Uh, I procured this from my friends over at SG Ammo. This is Factory Remand, 7.62 by 39, um, corrosive primer. I am not sure where this was originally manufactured, but it was remanufactured by uh, Vimvanel in Russia. I think it's Russia? Yeah, Russia, um, as former Yugoslavian stock. Uh, 124 grain, steel cased, corrosive primed, bird am primers. Um, it's polymer coated steel. Um, this is a standard issue lead core, copper jacket, ball ammo. <clears throat> um, works fine. Um, the uh, the AR I built uh, with the 762 upper, um, the AKR 39, um, ate this stuff like nobody's business. Uh, I went through 50 rounds, breaking in the barrel and doing some rough side in. We're pretty close. For the red dot, green dot I've got, it works fine. But anyway, and I happen to have a couple other types of ammo. So this is. Tula, everybody knows, a herd of Tula, the, one of the multiple uh, ma ammo manufacturers over in uh, Russia. Um, this, these were actually made at the Tula factory in Russia. These are unpolymer coated, steel cased, 122 grain, lead core, copper jacketed. These are non-corrosive burden primers. Um, just so you guys can see the difference between the uncoated and coated steel case. See how this one's a little shinier and this one's kind of dull. That's the difference between the polymer coating and the unpolymer coated. And these are sealed. You can tell they're sealed by, they have this pointing device here. They have that, I don't know if the camera can pick it up or not, but there is a purple band around the neck. And if you look real close to the primer, there is a purple band there also. That's the polymer coating that seals it. These are unsealed, steel case, non-corrosive. Only difference between the coated and uncoated, these, these potentially, the uncoated can potentially stick potentially stick. Now, that's only going to happen if you don't take care of your ammo, let it get rusty. I mean, there is a bit of a coating, but not these, not this spray-on polymer. Let's see, set that there, set that there. And one other one I wanted to talk about, and this is what I happen to have loaded in one of my 20 rounds, is that bad boy. This, as you can see, is brass. These are made by our friends over at Fort Scott. 762 by 39 tumble on impact hunting slash self-defense rounds. These are 117 grain, so these are light. Um, they are match grade bullets with match grade powder. So these are gonna be fast boys with a little bit more knockdown power. Um, plus, they have the whole tumble on impact. 
I'm not going to go into the details of the TUI technology. If you're interested, go to the Fort, Fort Scott Munitions website and it breaks it down as to how it does it. But these leave a nasty wound, you know. Um, literally, the bullet basically, well, I'm just going to use this as an example, penetrates and the bullet's going to swap ends. So it will destroy tissue as it tumbles to the animal bad guy whatever um it's even even the tip is a pointy bit these are spun copper bullets there's no lead core to this this is solid copper um much like what we're running in g2c those are i mean these are tarnished because this is my backup mag these are solid copper also these just happen to be solid copper hollow points these are the core bonds core bond makes actual round for 762 but 39 also i'm going to try and get a hold of some of them but they tend to be kind of pricey uh uses this this exact bullet technology the segmented break apart bad boy stuff um barrier blind so i'm this runs about 45 dollars for a box of 20 though Eesh. Uh, yeah, I know, pricey, but uh, we're going to buy it, and uh, yeah, we're going to science it. We're going to do some, because I want to eventually, I need to get a couple more boxes of these TUIs from Fort Scott, because these are what I'm actually going to also use for hog hunting. That's what I'm, that's my plan anyway, but Federal Mail also makes a good hunting round, and so does Hornaday, so I may be doing some testing, I don't know, we're going to see. Um, but yeah, these are, these are what I'm keeping loaded up in this 20 rounder as my quote unquote home defense zombie apocalypse round for right now. But uh, I just wanted to go over some of that. Um, oh, another fun fact. Let's see if I have them. Whenever you buy a box, and you know, these aren't cheap. These are about $35 here in location redacted Oklahoma. Um, made in USA, 100% USA products. But you get this neat little card. On one side, it lists a excerpt from the, the First Amendment. And then, of course, on the other side, it lists a... a Important piece from our Second Amendment. The two things that us fun-loving uh, American patriots like to use. So it's kind of a neat thing. It comes with every box. You throw there are these you know key tags, plastic ones you can pop on your keychain. I think that's kind of neat. It's kind of a neat little thing that they throw in. Um, been been a thing about the Fort Scott. Uh, you used to be able to order right from their website. And you still can. You can order swag from them. But you can't order ammo from them right now because of 2020, basically. But they do list, uh, have a list of local vendors that you can buy these from. So go there, check these guys out. I am, again, I bought this out of my own pocket. You know the, you know the drill. I'm going to tell you about the stuff that I like. I'm not getting reimbursed for any of this. Although, Fort Scott, if you see this, I would love a few more boxes of these. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I just wanted to add that on. These are the, those are the three ammos that I'm running right now. Um, you can pick these up. I think these are running for about $9.99 on SG Ammo. These are still available, these factory remands, and... Don't be scared by the corrosive primer. It just, if you clean your guns after you get done shooting, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, use a water-based um, gun cleaning com compound. I like using this. This is what we we use. Um, Slip 2000 Formula 725. It's a water-based gun solvent. Just soak everything down with this. Set your bolt carrier group aside and work on your cleaning your chamber and uh, actually if you're I know this is not part of 
what we're talking about today. But if you're not sure on how to clean an AR, the boys at Bear Creek just put up a video two, three weeks ago, breaking down the easiest way to clean an AR. And um, that's basically the method I use too, for all intents and purposes. You don't need a bunch of fancy things. You need a poor snake, lots of these paper towels. We all love the blue towels. You need a short ramrod. You don't need a full length ramrod if you're using a boar snake. You need a chamber brush, a chamber mop to swab it all out after you break all the stuff loose. You saturate this down with some of this gun cleaner. Just swab out the bore, rinse it, and then do it again. And then what I usually do is I'll take a blue towel Put it over the top of this, stuff it in there, attached to this ramrod, and uh, see if it comes out clean. If it comes out clean, you're done. So, and then you just kind of hose out your hose out your lower because the lowers don't get that dirty. I mean, just you know, spray it down. Whoops, spray it down and uh, wipe it out with a blue towel, and you're good to go. Um, but anyway, that's I digress. So don't, don't let corrosive ammo, corrosive primer ammo scare you. Just clean your gun after you're done shooting. You're fine. Um, again, $7.99 for a box of 20. $9.99 for a box of 20. Mm, about $35 for a box of 20. But these are not plinking rounds. So, um, oh, and before anybody asks, the difference between the 124 grain and the 122 grain almost inconsequential i didn't notice any difference shooting both i would and i was intermixing these in the same magazine a couple of one a couple of another just to see if i noticed i didn't notice any difference so they both they both chambered they both fed doesn't freaking matter um that bear creek upper will eat anything you shove through it uh, as long as you keep it clean uh, just like any ar just like any ak so um yeah, that was just a little add-on to the history of the 7.62 by 39, and I just wanted to break it down a little bit further and show you the ammo that I'm running. For now, uh, we're going to test. Some, we're going to get a hold of some of these other ones, and we're going to go out to the range and do some testing, and I'll report back on what I find. But these three ran fine. So, as always, y'all be safe and keep your powder dry, folks, and stay tuned.